she knew at the age of six that she wanted to be a marine biologist. And at 21, she co-founded the nonprofit Big Blue and You, helping educate kids about marine conservation through art and through media. She's the host of Exploration Station, the best on Fox. And recently, she was recognized as one of the STEM 10, which is a huge honor for innovators making a difference in the world. STEM, for all those who don't know, is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's a pretty big deal. Thank you, guys. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. What an impressive video. Thank you. I mean, that's a huge honor. It really was. And that, that initiative is brand new, fresh off the press this year. Actually, like a month ago, it came out. And um, it's all about inspiring young kids and telling them that innovation and, and, and career fields in STEM are totally possible for them. And um, I was really excited to be included in a group of the 10, which also had Jaden Smith involved, um, a YouTube star who's known as Physics Girl was involved as well. So it was really, really an honor. You're no slouch in that, in that category. I mean, to be, I mean, I'm sure they're talking somewhere else tonight saying, and Danny Washington did that. <laughs> because, I mean, you're a perfect example of like, find that passion and just do it and keep doing it. You know, and, and you know, founding uh, Big Blue and you when you're 21 and knowing at six you want to do this and just keep doing it. Just accolades and everything, they're right on track for you. So, well, thank so, you. so proud of you for everything you're up to with that. All right, thank but you. I have to ask because you're diving with whale sharks in that video and that's like huge on my bucket list. Yes. Where, where was that? <laughs> that was definitely one of the most brilliant experiences I've ever had in my life. That was in, just off the coast of Mexico. Um, Isla Mujeres is an island right by Cancun. So uh, out there every summertime, every summer, these whale sharks will aggregate in that, that area um, about five miles off the coast. I'm talking about like 50 to 100 individual sharks wow. coming through that area and they're feeding because it's a, a massive fish spawning. So a few different species of spit fish are spawning their eggs and that's what they're eating. And they're just everywhere. And so Mexico has done, you know, they, they've found this out, scientists discovered this, and now, you know, a lot of people go down there to, to get that moment to swim next to the largest fish in the ocean. And Not the people, largest animal. Everybody always asks me that, but the largest fish. And for people who don't know, you literally, they're cruising on top of the ocean, right? It's like on top of the, not the bottom. Not the bottom, no. They, they're mainly, they skim the surface for the most part. Yeah, they're, the, they're filter feeders. So they eat plankton, they eat fish <laughs> eggs, they eat really small minnows. So their diet consists of most organisms that live at the top surface of the water. So Watch this. Who here has, has swam with whale sharks before? Oh, cool. Pretty okay. Amazing. Yeah. I recommend it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of those, it's definitely one of those things I know I'm, every time I see it, I saw that video, I was like, oh. You have to do it. I mean, it's just the most humbling experience that you can have when you're swimming next to an animal that size and knowing that, number one, they don't want to eat you. Most people will be like, yeah, what are you doing? You can swallow you whole. I'm like, yes, this is true, but that's not the case when you're in the ocean. You're just there and you're in the presence of magnificence and this beauty and you see their spots on their bodies they look like they're hand painted I mean they're just beautiful mm. and for the most part they're just doing their thing and they're out there feeding and like they see you and they're like okay you're gonna swim in front of me they'll curve they're maybe just... you got, might get whacked by a uh, caudal fin every now and again if you don't pay attention to where you're swimming but otherwise no they're they're brilliant I love them so in the ocean you're a marine biologist you've been all over the world swimming diving um, you know, I know some of the places we started talking about, like Ecuador and other places. What about some of those experiences that, you know, the whale sharks are, are super incredible. But one of those diving experiences that really kind of moved you. I always talk about this one because it is the top, my number one underwater experience that I've ever had. Uh, it was in Ecuador and we were diving for a production. We were, it's called Ocean Gems and it was all about inspiring girls to pursue careers in marine science. And so... It was, it was right on, on point, and we were interviewing a marine biologist by the name of Dr. Andrea Marshall, who studies giant mantas all over the world. So we got to go out with her on a field, you know, field trip for seven days, going to see this new um, area of mantas that she had just found out about. And so seven days, we're diving, 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 sea mantis. I mean, hard, some of the hardest diving I've ever done. I mean, the water was freezing. It was very, very green, like pea soup green, uh, and there was massive current. But this was perfect for the giant mantas because they were, again, feeding. They had lots of plankton in that area, so they were, they were everywhere. And so the last day, we, we had been filming all seven days, got some great shots, but there was one particular manta that we ended up seeing that had a, a fishing line wrapped around its body. 
And unfortunately, you know, a lot of local fish, fishermen will discard their fishing gear just out of, you know, not knowing that this is going to last forever. And it, and it ends up becoming like a ghost net or a ghost line that oh, wow. fish get entangled in. So this particular manta had that on its body. Andrea Marshall saw that we were together diving and she raced off and found the manta, cut it off because she had a dive knife on her. And that manta, we were just there trying to do some stuff and getting ready to ascend. The manta came back around right behind us and almost as if he was saying thank you. Like it was just, it was the most powerful experience. And then from that moment when it came back, we went off into the depths and hit the thermocline, which is where the water temperature changes. So there's a distinct difference in color. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and below that thermocline, the water was cobalt blue, freezing, of course. But we went down there with that manta and I lost every sense of where I was. Like we were swimming and doing like loops in the ocean and all I could look at were the eyes of this manta that was staring at me. And I knew that manta was, could see me and was looking at me, which was just unbelievable. Wow, what an interaction. I mean, he, he could feel, I mean, that was love. I mean, he oh, at first knew sight, that yes. <laughs> helped him or she helped him just kind of then be there and just mm -hmm. swam with you for a while and just kind of. And just hung out and was uh, this. And you know, Mantis over the years since scuba diving, you know, came up, people have had a lot of stories about Mantis and that they're really interactive and special. And uh, they, they do have the largest brain of any fish species based on the proportion to their body size. And just to mention that one manta had a wingspan of about 19 feet. Wow. So this is a huge animal. <laughs> That's yeah. huge. That's yeah. 19 feet. 19 feet. I dove with mantas off uh, in Bali, but mm. there was definitely not 19 feet. It was probably more like 8 to 10. I thought they were pretty big. Yeah, those are, they're still giants. Yeah, but giants. these were the biggies. They were just, and it was, they were all over the place in Ecuador. It's off an island called Isla de, Isla de la Plata. I'm gonna get my Spanish right. As well. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, in talking about a lot of places you've been or where you want to go, I was really surprised to learn the place that super high on your list is, you know, one of the, I guess, creme de la creme of places that people go, right? The Great Barrier Reef yes. is where I actually got my diving certificate. Really? Yeah. Your open water, you got it there. Water diving certificate. Mm -hmm. I got Some. that there. Um, but tell me about some of these places that, so Ecuador was obviously a huge moving experience for you. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned Papua New Guinea. Yes. What'd you do there and tell me about that experience? So this was another trip affiliated with that program, Ocean Gems, and we went there for two and a half weeks and we went on a liveaboard dive boat and had a chance to explore the sea mounts in Papua New Guinea. And that for me was definitely the wildest place I've ever been because you don't see a lot of people around there. Um, most of the tribes and the folks that live on the islands are in their, you know, in their village, they are there, but it's just massive trees everywhere. And so when we were out in the water, you would see these islands covered with beautiful forests and then no other boats. Nobody was out there wow. for seven days, and, and it's pretty remote. There. I mean, it's, it's super remote. Very much, and you said like even your experience just interacting with the tribes people, right? Mm -hmm. Where they had never really met anyone like you, whether it's your hair, your your you know your, your shade, or anything like. It was like a whole new experience for everyone. Yeah, I mean, the the local people from Papua New Guinea are beautiful. I mean, they've got this gorgeous caramel skin. Some of them have blonde hair and and a mix. You know, just look very Aboriginal, like the Aborig Aborigines in Australia. Um, but yeah, they were just beautiful people and welcoming. And again, like you said, Michael, they, the tribe that we visited that day uh, or that trip hadn't really seen anyone else that looked like them visiting the island. Mm. So that for me was very powerful and it felt like home. It was really nice. They, they welcomed me with open arms. Wow. Yeah. All right, so you're based in Miami. Mm -hmm. You're getting ready to shoot the third season. Congratulations, doing the third Thank season, you. right? Thank you. Best. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on Fox, right? It's, gonna be on, it's on Fox. It's on Fox, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but you said this time you're going to be more in the field. <laughs> Right, yeah. which is kind of like a whole new thing for the show. Well, to give you a little premise, the show Nature Knows Best is focused primarily on biomimicry. So we're looking at tech and design inspired by nature. Oh. So, so far in the last two seasons, we've covered so many, I mean, countless robots, drones, um, but really cool medical advancements that are all based on what nature has already discovered, right? 3.8 billion years of research and development. Nature's got the answers, right? Nature knows. Nature knows. Nature knows Just best. Like said, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, we hope to really, yeah, ex get out in the more in the field. Like that's my vision for the show and where we're going to evolve to and take people on adventures into nature. Because so far we've been focused on more of the technology and getting to visit these professors and inventors and really awesome people who have, are taking notes. Um, but I think where I'd like to go, the question was where. Yeah, like do you have like a dream thing if you're kind of like leading them to either you know places that you want to go or 
something to shoot? Yeah, I, we, I mean, we've shot mainly in domestically. So we've done Canada and the US, uh, but I definitely want to go overseas. Europe has got some incredible advancements happening out there and, and, and also in Africa. Like there are a lot of the sources of inspiration are coming out of Africa and, and mm. different <coughs> animals that are there. And so that would be a dream, definitely, to go to Africa for the show. Yeah. You know, with that uh, quote up earlier, the Sylvia Earle quote, and yeah. you know, I have to think, you know, you growing up in Florida, I know she moved to Florida when she was like 12 or something. Mm -hmm. She was obviously a huge hero of yours. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, what is it about being in the ocean that you just love so much? What I love so much about being in the ocean is really the, the fact that you can be 100% present in the moment. There's no, there's nothing else you can think of. I mean, especially if, if you're surfing or if you're, I mean, if you're just swimming or if you're scuba diving, like you have no choice. You have to be in the moment. And I think that's the power of the ocean, um, getting back to the source of life, because I think innately as humans, we know that we come from water and water is in us. I mean, we're 70% water, just like the planet. You know, there's all these different things if we just pay attention to what nature's telling us, but the ocean specifically, I think in this time, in this era that we're living in, is sending us a lot of messages. And so it's time that we really pay attention. Um, whether it's talking about sea level rise or ocean acidification or climate change, you know, all of these things lead back to the health of the ocean, which is a reflection of our health as humans. And so I see those parallels all the time. Um, but again, being underwater is where I'm the happiest because I know that I belong there and I feel free and like, it, you know, it's just, it's just that feeling. And I, I, my hope and my dream is that through my career and through my travels that I can share this journey with people that I love and beyond, but to show them to the best thing that you can ever do is to get over the fear of being in the ocean and being, you know, in the water. That is, it's such a liberating thing. And I, I hope that people will really feel inspired to do that. So from that side, so with Big Blue and you, it's mm -hmm. all about you know, educating and really helping kids learn through media and through, through arts about ocean conservation, right? About marine yes. conservation. Do you take people on trips or is it more, I know you have your big festival, your, your fest coming up in March, right? Mm -hmm. March 7th? March, March 3rd, 3rd. artsy. It's, it's the seventh one. Yes, the right? seventh annual, you got it. Right. Got so a great it's memory. Artsy, so it's, it's coming up in March. Mm -hmm. Um, but do you ever do any trips? Is there anything you've ever taken the kids to go do? Or? Um, I was a naturalist at the a nature center in Miami called Biscay Nature Center. I'm still technically a naturalist there. I go whenever I'm home, I try to go and work because I just love it. But we, uh, we take kids into the, the seagrass. So in Florida, we have seagrass beds that are just on the beaches. Um, most people will go to the beach and say, oh, what's that dark stuff there? You know, like, I don't want to go in the water. But it's actually grass growing, and it serves as a nursery for, I mean, millions of juvenile animals that eventually move on and move to the coral reefs and and populate our waters right so I take them out there we get nets and we get to catch the baby animals and look at them and then we put everything back so those are the that's mainly the places that I'll take them um, especially yeah, kids. Have any of these kids come back that you've again you've been doing this for a couple years and I, yeah. I love that you have this program as a way to like you're so inspired and so you know excited about the ocean and marine conservation that you're educating these kids. Yeah. Have any of these kids from any of your programs gone off to you know dive in other places or come back and told you stories? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So with Big Blue and you, I mean, we're really the catalyst to in, just inject that first level of curiosity and uh, and just wanting to know more. So we use art as the medium in order to do that, especially for kids who don't know how to swim or have, have never been to the ocean before. Um, but I've met so many kids throughout the years. I'm still in touch with them today. I have a couple interns that I met when they were in high school. Now they're in college. They're getting their marine biology degree like wow. this. Then gives me goosebumps to think about it because uh, we played a role in that. So that's. Oh, you know, you played a big role in that, <laughs> which is what you do. What does travel mean to you? Mm. Travel means uh, freedom to me. Mm. Freedom. You know, it's really it's freedom of mind, freedom of your spirit, your heart. It opens every channel that you need to evolve as a human and to be the best version of yourself because you're taking yourself out of what you know and you're moving into the unknown. And that's the greatest challenge for most people on this planet. But those who are brave enough to just, just take that first step and just go and go by yourself, go travel somewhere by yourself. That to me, that's like, that will change your life because that's when you really get to know who you are. Yeah. Nice, good answer. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was really deep, thank, thank you. you. I know you, you've done like a lot of liveaboards and, and ocean trips, but have you done a lot of like solo travel trips through Europe or anywhere else? Not through Europe, you know, actually Europe is still uh, a new frontier for me. I've only been to London, 
So I'm hoping to do that that trip soon. Um, one of my best friends. Um, oh, I want to go to Ireland. I guess connected to Europe, but I definitely want to go to Paris, uh -huh. Spain. I mean, Greece. Oh my God, the Greek islands. And the list just goes. It goes on and on and on. Yeah, I was gonna say my best friend Doreen over here. She's like a world traveler, independent. She's got back from the Cook Islands, um, solo. Like just like amazing stuff. So friends, the people that I love that are in my my circle, like we all we share this vision of wow. of doing all these things. So. So tell us how we can support stuff you're doing with STEM or with Big Blue and you. Tell tell yeah. people you know what. You know, we obviously have your social and everything up, and we talk about big blooms, but how, how can people be involved with some of the stuff you're up to? Besides, sure. watch the program and keep the ratings up so they bring you back for a fourth season. <laughs> that would be very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, we're in line to shoot season three in the fall. Um, it would be airing in April 2019, but currently season two is on air on reruns, and it's syndicated, so it's on Fox. I forget, is it Fox 5 here? It's Fox 11. Yeah. 11, okay. It's, yeah, but it syndicates to about 90 million homes around the country. Um, so it's really a blessing. Uh, and it's also on Hulu and Amazon Prime. So if you want to just watch it on demand, you can do that too. Uh, you can follow my adventures on Instagram. I'm a big Insta fan and I love stories. So. Oh, you know, your stories are great. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> so, so Danny is one of these people I, I definitely want to just acknowledge. Not only just, are you super passionate and... Bless you. <laughs> You know, in tune to marine <laughs> conservation collection. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we're all good. We're, we're all connected here, family. Um, <laughs> but you very much are very active in social activism and, and out. And just, you know, I just want to acknowledge everything you're up to with that. And I think it does play a big role, not just in your, in your you know, immediate space, but as you travel and as you go. You do live in Miami, but, yeah. you know, you're in LA quite a bit, I yes. imagine, other places. What, uh, what's next for you travel-wise? Travel-wise, um, actually, I just got a confirmation letter that I'm going to Borneo. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to be um, with the show. It's been, like I said, it's been a snowball, but it, they, they're, they're having a youth conference out there. It's kind of like a mock UN youth conference. And so they invited me to be their keynote speaker in, in oh, March. So I'm like, so Hi. thankful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you get to tack on like a little extra time there to, to kind of hang out? And dive? I don't think I will actually, because I have two other gigs right after that. So it's it, you know it's it's definitely the pacing and and just this career path has been really fast and it's it takes a lot of stamina. But I I love it and I know when I have the opportunity I do try to tack on a couple extra days to trips so that work trips so that I can go and explore somewhere. But um, yeah, as as it grows it will. And you guys can also support Big Blue and You. That would be amazing. So it's Big Blue and You on all social platforms and that's our website as well. You, you grew up in Miami but family's from Jamaica as well. Right? Yeah my mom's from Jamaica my dad's from the States um, but Native American and we we just have our Jamaican sides totally mixed up. We got <laughs> Scottish, Irish, uh, Portuguese, Jewish, we got all of it on, in Jamaica but that's what I love about my heritage is that Jamaica represents one love one people. Literally when you go to that island you will see that every nation, nationality ethnicity is represented there and and for me I try to embody that because that's what being from Jamaica is all about. I'm such a big fan of this woman. I mean, <laughs> as, as we do travel talks a way to bring together just different individuals who are doing things in the world, such as Danny or, or Richard Bangs or other professionals who have these travel experiences that really have been profoundly impacted their life and their career. And you can just hear the passion in your voice. And um, I was going to ask you like what your career trajectory is, but what, what I what I think is, you know, you probably have vision, but. You just seem to just keep going, and whatever keeps showing up as long on your path is mm. educating, you know, kids and keep learning about marine conservation. Do you have like a dream goal or something you want to do? Absolutely, every day. I mean, it evolves, but really, the ultimate is to do something similar to what Jacques Cousteau did, uh, create a, a, a really banging show about the ocean where I can take people underwater and and travel around the world. Um, but you know, yeah, staying in staying in the lane and following my passion is always rule number one for me. Um, you know, 10 years down the road so far working on this career path, it hasn't been easy. My family and my friends have supported me 100%. You know, they know if I'm sleeping on your couch here, I did like, can I just get a place to stay? And those kind of things, those are all real, you know, and, and those are the sacrifices that we make to follow what we love and what we believe that we're here to do. And so, yeah, it's worth it in the end. It really is, it all is, and, and it's about the journey. I completely agree. Yeah. Um, again, I'm such a fan of what you do and like how you, you bring the travel space into your world. So thank you for being here. <laughs>